There, uh, just a quick one about birds. Uh, this thought was hanging around in my head for quite a while now. I remembered finally to share it with someone. So, bird migration is the regular seasonal movement often north and south along a flyway between breeding and wintering grounds. Many species of bird migrate. Migration carries high costs in predation and mortality, including from hunting by humans, and is driven primarily by availability of food. It occurs mainly in the northern hemisphere, where birds are funneled onto specific routes by natural barriers such as the Mediterranean Sea or the Caribbean Sea. Now here we have a map. Uh, how are they migrating? And I was uh, this kind of bird watcher, ornithologic dude, when I was a young teenager, waking up at three o'clock in the morning, running the forest and check out some birds and then go back to sleep and I always wondered why why don't those birds just don't stay in the middle or like somewhere where it's like cool to stay all around the year and not take this often thousands of kilometers long journey to the summer place or vice versa back to the winter place like we have the bird here like cuckoo which is basically known all around the world as cuckoo because he says cuckoo you know everybody knows this bird but the funny thing is in Finnish language even though the bird says also here cuckoo his name is Kaki. yeah I have no idea why because it doesn't make sense a bird who's known worldwide for his singing voice, which is cuckoo. Yeah, let's call him Kaki. Okay, yeah, doesn't make sense to me, but it's fun. Anyway, so I thought, I theorized, I propose, or however you put it, I think. After I came to a conclusion that birds migrate because they are... First of all, able to fly, or let's make it the other way around. First of all, everybody knows that they are basically dinosaurs. Like some claim that Tyrannosaurus rex had feathers too. Okay, let's go with that fact, or however we take that knowledge. A little bit of coffee, sir. Okay, they are dinosaurs, so they have been around here for quite some time. Second, they can fly, most of them. Those who can't, they are like, they're, they might be soon extinct, I guess. Because I don't know how well, what is it, this big bird in Africa? Strauss, Struzzi, just remember. German and the Finnish word, like this big one. Anyway, I don't know he, how he can swim. I have no idea. But anyway, birds can fly. Third, I guess most of the birds, they have a really, really good mm, ability to navigate through the Earth's magnetic field, like pigeons. The dove, like this other dude, Noah, he probably knew that. Yeah, we put a crow out, a crow, 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 which is known to be wise. Yeah, and he put a crow, crow, yeah, the blackbird, you know, crow, probably, I don't know. He smashed into the mountain, threw a crow out, and after a while, he takes a pigeon. 
no one ever told me what happened to the crow. Why a crow in the first place? And if the crow is a wise bird and got released into freedom, yeah, probably thought, yeah, I won't go back where are humans. That's why I didn't return, I don't know. But anyway, afterwards he put a pigeon out. And he came back and brought him a branch of a tree or something. Which indicated that there was somehow land and stuff was going, was going on. Something survived. Yeah, but anyway, a pigeon, a dove, which is known for its ability to navigate with an electromagnetic field of air. Which is probably no coincidence. Like if those who know about Earth tilting over almost like 90 degrees or something. I will put a link below to a video you probably want to watch about Earth tilting over and stuff. After mm, that, it probably makes more sense, my theory about why birds migrate. So, like, they are basically imprinted with the old map of Earth, which doesn't really match up anymore with the habitat, uh, which are they made for, in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like, a colibri, for example, he wouldn't survive here in Finland because there is no flowers for him. It's probably too cold in winter, there is no flowers at all, ice flowers. So, uh, species are made for certain environments. But how you put it, or how should I put it? Because here you know, I have no script, I just started to make a video because I just thought I wanted to share this kind of thought. Yeah, anyway, they are so deeply imprinted with the Earth's magnetic field map of the point of when they were made. How to say that? Like, somebody may know, like those who read Sitchin about the Anunnaki and all stories and all this kind of stuff. It in a way starts the whole story with uh, after 144,000 years the Anunnaki returned to Earth to re-establish life. So, 144,000 years are many big sun cycles. A big year in the Zodiacal big wheel is a bit more than 25,000 years. <laughs> Every zodiacal sign lasts around 2,150 years. 12 times this and you get the whole. The half of it is about 12,000 years. The sun cycle, like on the other side of the wheel, right now at this moment it's going into the lion's sign. So, and I have seen once this kind of big wheel, which were like geological mm, marks, which were like in the timeline of Earth, like coming to being existence, constantly mm, moving, transforming. You know, it's not done yet, Earth is not finished, it just continues. It's a cycle which is going on for eons and eons, and it will continue for eons and eons. We are just like, we happen to be in this really small time. Like, human life, what, 80 years? It's already probably quite much over the average. So what's that compared to the cosmical timeline? Now anyway, 144,000 years, they returned, which means they have been here before. 
they re-establish life, which indicates they made it already before. This time, like the last time when they come, like what Sishin is reading about, like they just came at 50. Like much less than in the first time. I don't know what to make of that. Oh, I think those things have to be taken in consideration as well, because it would be foolish to think that we are the only ones. I don't like mathematics at all. I basically don't even like numbers. But you can prove somehow stuff with mathematics. And one thing is, it's mathematically impossible that we are alone in the universe. Just doesn't make sense. Just doesn't. And this really has to be taken in consideration. Because we have so much stuff on Earth, but we have no idea where are they from, who made them, why, what, and no idea. No idea. Stonehenge or all this kind of stuff, pyramids? No one knows. And yeah, there are like millions of theories about those, what the pyramids are for, why they happen to be in this constellation, how they made it, and all this kind of stuff. Why they are this kind of shape. I think. It's just one of the most abundant natural form that you can see if you stand in the landscape. Tetrahedrons. Hydrons. Tetrahydrons. Triangles. Mountains. Triangles. Triangle shaped mountains. You can see if you stand just there and watch a mountain that it's a fucking triangle. But dendritical, dendritical patterns or Lichtenberg figures. I mean, these kind of river, river beds or mountains, like you have to be really in a satellite to see them. So they are not this kind of basic stuff, what you see when you just roam around on Earth's surface. Not even two meters elevated from the ground with your eyes, usually. There's all kinds of stuff in front of you, trees, houses nowadays, and stuff. But you can see the mountains, they're triangles, most of them. It depends how they came into being. Through wind, or plasma, or electrical, static energy processes. I don't know. It depends where you are and what they are made from and all the stuff gets altered all the time. And in every event, stuff gets altered. So from granite you get probably something completely different and it just evolves and evolves, evolves. Probably some new stuff is coming, some is probably blown up into space or whatever. Cycles and cycles and cycles, that's why Basically, none of whatever geological map makes any sense in a way that they could reproduce what they are talking about. Yeah, of course, there are fault lines to some degrees, but they really don't explain much about the volcanism far away from fault lines and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, about the birds. Earth is tilting over. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, that's the video I will put below. I just wanted to show you a few seconds of it, that probably it's easier for you to grasp what I mean, why birds migrate in the first place, because they were made, or how to put it, for a certain environment, in a certain place. And stuff happens, deluge and like, you know, those thunderstorms and supersonic winds and earth got shaped again, once again. And if it 
tails, all the they call it fault lines and all this kind, which are just the basic veins of this capacitor in space, which is all, which is actually provable with laboratory uh, stuff. You know, I will search and then probably I will show you once what I mean. It includes all the telluric currents and Birkeland currents jet streams and all this kind of stuff. It's all related. It's one thing. There's just many parts of it. But none of them acts independently. They all interact all the time. This is something what you really have to get. It's constant. It won't stop. It fluctuates and it comes in cycles over and over and over and over again. But why birds migrate? Earth hitting over magnetic poles, places changing. So the birds, they are like messed up. They don't know what's going on. You know, my head or my whatever tells me to go there and I just have to go. I don't know why, but now it's getting cold here. Now we have to go back or it's the other way around. It's because of the magnetics. The imprint of the bird's magnetic map doesn't match up with the actual with the actual position of Earth. So does it mean back then probably when we had dinosaurs the Earth was tilted over and now it's 90 degrees to what it has been then and does it shift now back 90 degrees so birds don't have to migrate anymore? What? I don't know. Listen to this guy. It's interesting. I will shut up and you can watch this video in your own pace for the... It's just five minutes, but it's worth it. Why do ancient star charts show the stars as they are now? Where the monoliths still line up perfectly with the stars if the Earth tilts? Why is some Antarctic ice over a million years old if it goes to the equator every other cycle? Well, the first two were easy, as we have gone over some of them. The Pentagon Papers taken by Major White support the story of numerous others and the modern observations. And it yeah, watch the whole video for yourself. Make up your own mind. No gods, no masters. Think for your fucking self. Gather as much knowledge as you can get. Don't cherry pick. If you start to cherry pick about things, you will never find the truth. Like, talking about aliens? It has to be talked about aliens. If you leave aliens completely out of the game, you are cherry picking. So it has to be taken into account. Also, talking about Aliens, like, I mean, really aliens, intelligent life forms, like, probably much more advanced than we are. It has to be taken into account. Thanks.